Good afternoon. Today is the 15th of March. It's time to do our monthly visit to Barron's Classic Car Auctions, which is uh, at Marchwood near Southampton. So we're doing a little preview of their March sale. I'm afraid I couldn't come later in the month, um, which is why some of the cars that are actually listed for sale at the moment aren't here. And there are some cars here that are all waiting pickup or something like that that um, actually aren't listed in um, the catalogue at the moment. This for Puma, for example, that we saw last time we were here, is not listed. But I presume that's a waiting pickup or something like that. But one car that's definitely for sale this month uh, here is this Toyota RAV4 Reebok Special Edition. I don't even know Reebok done any special editions of any manufacturers, but apparently they have with this one. It's an odd thing that the headlights on this have some kind of weird surrounds on them. I think they probably originally were gold or something. It's very strange. This is a really, really late first generation RAV4. Obviously, it's a facelifted one. They were only made till 2000, so this is one of the very last. I presume the Reebok special edition is to kind of get rid of some of their excess stock or something. The pattern seats are so typical of cars from the 1990s. There was a five door available as well, but this is a three door. This is the original shape that actually came out. Um, would have been from somewhere in the London area originally, judging by that plate. Uh, sometimes the cars are open, sometimes they're not. I'll just try this one because I haven't seen a first generation RAV4 for years. Unfortunately not. This is actually an automatic one. Um, I'll just have to get a bit closer. There we go. It's done only 68,000 miles, which I think is remarkable. I'm quite tempted to sort of get something like this um, for myself. They're very rare now. They did have catastrophic rust like so many other 90s Toyotas, but uh, that's pretty interesting. But we've come across something else that's interesting to you. Is, um, I'll just have to check in my catalogue to see if this actually is um, still for sale. Um, I'm a f have a feeling that it might not be, unfortunately. Oh, it is. Oh, yes. It's a 2001 Jaguar XJ8 3.2 Executive. That RAV4 was listed uh, for a price of um, between two and three thousand pounds. This Jaguar was estimated a little bit cheaper than that, actually. It's estimated um, only between eighteen hundred and three thousand pounds. And of course, it has a beige leather interior. Mmm, with wood. That seat's going to need some attention now, isn't it? I do like a nice beige leather interior. I don't think I'm the only one either. Um, it's a little bit tempting for you, but I don't think I can afford the fuel bills. I've got enough problems with my own R45 V6 in terms of paying for fuel. Got quite a few American cars here this time. Uh, some of these we've seen before, like this Chevrolet Suburban. It's a 1996. It was imported, I think, into this country in something like um, 1999 from memory. I think it was originally sold in Canada. Not really the most practical car on uh, the average suburban street in this country. Yeah, terrible joke, I know. Um, see if this is open. I think this has got a base level interior as well. No, it's not open today, but the size of this, I think it's an, like it's an eight or nine seater or something like that. Um, we'll take a look at the guard price that we just paused so while I, I uh, bring it up. Yeah, it's um, between seven and a half and nine thousand pounds. Uh, who knows? It's the LT model. It's got all sorts of all sorts of bells and whistles on it. Something else I don't think we see much over here is this enormous big yellow Ford um, pickup. It's the it's a Boss trim. The Triton V8, 5.4 litres of pure American V8 power. So this is up for uh, between 16 and 20,000 pounds. It is an F-150, I've just checked. I get confused about these sort of things. Viewers, we don't really know much about that kind of thing. Can you think of something that makes more of a statement in this country than something like this? I can't think of many things. Look at this, uh, this Range Rover. Now, I can't remember if this is the V8 model or not. Oh, it is. 4.6 V8. <laughs> and yes, viewers, it is dark green. Which does it have a beige leather interior as well, viewers? I think it might. It's a 95 um, P38 Range Rover. Um, V8 
these are getting quite rare in this sort of condition. I mean, you know, the years these were completely neglected. These were no budget reviews cars for quite some considerable time. And, uh, you know, they've got a very, very bad reputation for, you know, all sorts of problems. But I think, ooh. Oh, yes. It's not quite a beige leather interior view. It's sort of more biscuit interior. But yeah, it is the HSE. A friend of mine used to own one of these and he had it converted to look a bit more like this, the successor model of the L322, which was a sort of popular thing back in the day. This one, I think, might have had some new clear um, indicators on the front and also the uh, later style of the rear lamps. Actually, you might have a look in this side as well, it's exciting. Electric seats and automatic gearbox and all kinds of things. You could, I think, still get um, a manual one of these, possibly only on the uh, engine we can't talk about, because we can't talk about diesel on this channel views. We can talk about the fact that this is up for between four and a half and six thousand pounds. I don't think we had a look at it last time. Um, I'd think it was closed, but uh, it's not now. And mm, it's green. Yes, views. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to have a. A sort of trawl and see if I can get a P38 on the channel. I think people have asked about that before. What we haven't asked about though is uh, these Ford Thunderbirds. And actually, we have two Ford Thunderbirds. We have this one and we have this one. We have both of them. This one is in 1960. I can't claim to know much about these apart from seeing them in you know endless numbers of American films and television series over the years. The size of these things is absolutely crazy. Let's have a look at a bit more detail in this catalogue here. So it's a guide price between eight and a half and eleven and a half thousand pounds. Let's open the door and have a look inside as well, see if it's open. Look at that. Wow. I know that Wow. That makes quite a noise. I'll wake my neighbours up with that. I know that um you don't really see these. I don't think you see these actually in the first um, James Bond film, Doctor No, but it has that sort of feeling to it. So you tend to see more Fords from, from Russia Love onwards. So they had a deal with Ford for many, many years. I mean, a lot more in something like um, Goldfinger, which of course is where this one was used. I think, uh, if, if I remember, it's a Cease Linder actually has driven around in one of these um, in, in Goldfinger. It's a 64 Thunderbird. This one does look like it's in slightly better condition than the other one, although it's not perfect. You can see, you know, some painted perfections and things on this. Again, it's absolutely, utterly huge. I have a feeling it's either one of these or a 65 Thunderbird that appears early on in Thunderball. It's driven by Adolfo Celli, who plays um, um, Largo. That's it. Got to get my facts right, haven't I? This one's between 60 and 20,000 pounds, so it's a bit more. They, they, they look actually quite different. It's funny how the styling of these older American cars kind of varied quite a lot by the model year. I think this one's open as well. Oh my gosh, smell that. Wow. Look at all these power controls. It's got air conditioning. It's got power windows. Oh, it smells really nice actually in here as well. I think somebody's obviously had a good go at cleaning that. Is that a power control for the electric windows? Hang on, so what? That's really strange. So we've got we've got manual windows, but those must be power power switches for the um, door locks and things. Goodness me. White wall tyres, of course. I know it's not the kind of thing we normally have on the uh, on the channel or things series, but it does it does look fantastic. That is um, that is quite something for that's a much a lot of metal. This is something we saw last month as well. It's a 1960 Walsley 1500. I mean, it's not sort of perfect or anything, but uh, you know, I think the guide price of three thousand to four hundred four thousand two hundred fifty pounds is not a lot of money does need a bit of attention the paint looks a little bit on the old side but it, it's quite presentable really it's a lot sort of um, more luxurious in here than the Morris Minor it's based on isn't it years you get a sort of full width dash and two glove boxes and all sorts of things you don't get a rev counter because this isn't a Riley 1.5 
Okay, that door might need a bit of tension now. I'll have to come we get to close that a bit better later on. Someone's been in the Wardia Ozers Club at some stage. It's just funny that something like this, it's a, you know, it's a very, very old car, but it is, it's it's not necessarily worth as much money as a lot of people would sort of think it is. Yeah, I mean, it could do with some paint and things. It doesn't, it doesn't look particularly bad. Obviously, I'd advise you something like this, if you were going to buy it, that you did still have an MOT on it, even though they are exempt. That's just a sensible idea, really. I think this is the most modern car that we've ever, ever seen at this sale, actually. It's a 2013 BMW 118 convertible. I've actually driven one of these. I drove a very early one of these. It was a 58 registration on sensible second-hand reviews back in January. This one's got a, well, it's a white leather interior, I'd say. It's not green or anything, and a six-speed manual. They're actually quite nice cars to drive these. Um, they're based on the first generation one series. This is actually in production when the second generation had come out, because they made these a little bit later. And the price on this is between five and a half and seven thousand pounds. It's only done forty-nine thousand miles. I think that's probably quite accurate for this. It looks in very nice condition. Something that I think a lot of you will probably prefer though to one of these is this. It's a Ford Cortina 2000E, which um, is from 1975. This is a facelifted Mark III Cortina. I'm very grateful to see that that door is open. Good old Cortina and Capri door handle. Look at this. The interior is quite similar to these to the Mark IV Cortina. They when we change them over. Actually, the chassis underneath is the same as the Mark 4 and 5 Cortina as well. Look at this, a rev counter. Absolute decadent luxury. Still a four-speed manual. I think you could get um, an automatic version of this as well. Showing 82,000 miles. I mean, this is, it's not quite life on Mars spec because that did use a facelifted uh, Mark 3 Cortina. But that one actually had a, an earlier front end put on it. So it had the later dashboard, which this would have had as well. But it's the same sort of colour. And it's very sort of similar in, in appearance and in a way to the car used in the Sweeney, the console. But of course, it's a completely different car. I think the colour might actually be the same. I don't know. Someone who's a Ford expert will be able to tell me. Vinyl roof, of course. It looks pretty good. I mean, you know... It's probably not entirely perfect, but that looks that looks brilliant. I think the price of um, between six to seven thousand pounds or something like this, considering when it's something like an Escort, particularly a two-door one, would be thousands of thousands of pounds more than this. And this has that connection with life on Mars, and they use several Mark III Cortinas in the Sweeney as well. I think that's pretty good. I think we might have seen this particular car before, viewers, but I'm not 100% sure. It's a 1988 Porsche 944. I don't think it's an S or anything. I think the slightly later ones of this do look a little bit different, but this is the, um, the shape that looks very similar to the original, which came out in 82. Very nice wheels. The guide price on this is only between five and six thousand pounds. I didn't realize you could pick one of these up still for sensible second hand classics money, but it appears that you can. It's a much, um, sort of more logical dash layout of the 924 that I have driven on the channel although it, it still does retain I think some elements from that earlier car interior is very very 80s very very 80s as is, as is this colour that door probably needs just a little bit of all on it it's a bit stiff wiper is there I don't know where the, the um, kind of uh, sort of luggage cover is there yes I can see that there that's good and we've got the sunroof that works. Marvellous. Yeah. My, my question that some people ask is, can you buy a 944 for under £5,000? I think you can. I mean, obviously, this is going for auction at the end of next week, so we'll have to see, but there we go. Also, something that we've seen before is this uh, sort of interesting take on a BMW Z3. It's, it's not actually... Um, as old as it might appear. It's supposed to look like sports cars from, I think, around the year 1960, I'd say, 60, 65, something like that. 
It's called a Tribute Automotive Z300S, um, and it's from 1998, hence VR registration. So we've got this sort of interesting door handles on this as well. So, you know, they sell a lot of Z3s here. I've, I've, seen, I've seen lots of them when I've been here over, over the course of many months. And um, this doesn't look anything like them. We've got the old style kind of door handle to get in. But you can see actually that there are still some Z3 sort of architecture in here, but the da dash is completely different um, in most respects. That's just heater panels, not. We've got an older style radio in here. We've got a uh, sort of wooden rim steering wheel. That, that dash top is completely different. We've got all these gauges in here. They're actually in Italian, so it's supposed to look like a Italian car, maybe. Even the door cards have been sort of made. I suppose if you, if you want something that looks like one of these older racing cars from the early 60s, and the colour's lovely, by the way. It's, it's like a British racing green, but it's a sort of very dark British racing green that, that the sports cars actually wore, rather than the sort of bright and metallic versions that you see on you know, most of the cars in the 90s, for example. And this would be, uh, this would be pretty good. Let's just check that estimate again. Uh, it's between nine and eleven thousand pounds. Now, interestingly enough, we've actually got a standard Z3 here as well. This is estimated between two thousand three hundred and three thousand three hundred pounds. Mileage on this is um, ninety-eight thousand. This particular car is a one-point-nine, so it's the four-cylinder. The very early ones were a one-point-eight. See if this is open, looks like it is. It's a five speed in it. I've driven a Z3 actually, which belonged to um, James Martin from the uh, JM on Cars channel uh, temporarily. He didn't have it for too long, I don't think. Um, the three litre model. So it would have been a bit better equipped than this. But this looks pretty nice. It, it smells good actually. There's been a real sort of um, resurgence in, in prices of these cars recently, although they're still not massively expensive if, you, if you've got between two and three thousand pounds and you want a little sports car then actually this might be quite a good option so you've got to watch for rust like everything else haven't you but um yeah they sold loads of these around here i think we've seen the 66 mustang uh, before as well on a on a d plate it's got the american racing wheels on it estimates between um 22 and 25 thousand pounds I don't know why this hasn't sold so far. I um, don't really understand that really myself, but there we go. The market is the market. Maybe it's, it's an, an auto, I don't know. What was it imported? It's saving information here. Uh, it was, yeah, it was imported um, around three years ago into this country. Some obviously like the music or some speakers in there as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not my kind of thing particularly, but you know, if you're looking for one of these, then it looks like a very nice example. Right, let's uh, just pause a second and we'll look at the information on this, uh, on this Corvette. So again, something uh, interesting. Now, it, it's, it's on an end plate, but this is a 1994 Corvette C4. It was imported from Japan. It's been registered um, for UK use. Glass fibre, of course. Uh, estimate is between nine and eleven thousand pounds. It's similar to that black Thunderbird we saw earlier on in terms of what it's estimated at. MOT is until July 2023. So mine is quite low. It only had two owners. Just open it up if it's open. Oh, we've got bongs as well, and we've got incredibly complicated stalks. All that 90s American goodness in there. I've just been made aware again of just how loud it is when I shut the doors in this building. I'd better see if I can do that a bit more quietly. Yeah. Again, it's not particularly my kind of thing, but uh, it's quite nice. Next, we've got this very, very nice 1996 Porsche 911 Targa Tiptronic S. The estimate of this is between 55 and 65,000 pounds. Considerably more than the, um, than the Corvette. Okay, look, there's the uh, Targa panel at the top here. See if this is open. It's a bit more uh, valuable than the um, 996, 911 that I drove at the end of last year. Oh, it's very, very nice in here. I, I, I really like the 993 generation of 911. I think it's a very, very nice looking car. 
think they sort of got it just right with this. I know they were planning on sort of bringing out a more dated model earlier on. It was a little bit of a stopgap, but these cars are really, really rising in value now. I don't know why the wiper blade's missing at the back. Who knows? Um, for those of you who are into sort of wipers, there we go. Next, we've got this um, Lotus Land Plus 2. We saw this uh, before. I think, it's, uh, I think it's a 70. I'll double-check that in a moment. Now, the car doesn't actually look too bad on the video, but, as with so many, but it is listed as actually needing an entire repaint, and I am not surprised, actually. Yes, it's 1970. Estimates between 12 and £14,000. This one we have seen before. Yeah, it needs it needs it needs repainting, doesn't it? This it really does. They're very interesting cars. These, I mean, everyone knows the sort of um, standard of land, the sort of series one to four, but you know, you don't see many of these. Bodywork needs a full respray. Yeah, you could leave the original patina. Obviously, it's not rusting or anything, is it? Battery's in the boot for some reason. It's interesting. Just take a look inside. If this is open. Oh, it is. Excellent. Yeah, you'd be reminded of how if you just left it as it is, you'd uh, need something. But the interior is quite nice. It smells very nice. There's a little bit of kind of a tear something on that driver's seat, but it's not too bad, is it? I'm sure, that's nice and fast. You've even got an ashtray on the driver's door. Yeah. Nice variety here. That's, that's one of the reasons I like coming here. 1995 Mercedes-Benz E220, the uh, A124 version, because uh, it's the Cabriolet. Estimate is between six to seven thousand pounds. So yes, the whole series of these cars, the uh, State, Saloon, Limousine, uh, Coupe and Convertible, are known as the 124 generation or W124, but this is the A124 because it's the open version. Now, I gather that actually corrosion on these front wings is quite normal, that needs sorting out the paint's just a bit flat generally, anyway, which actually you could see for once in this one of the videos. But oh my gosh, viewers, it's got a beige leather interior with wood. I do like a nice beige leather interior, so it's the very late A124. These were renamed, um, I think, from 1994 model year into the uh, into the E class, and this just has the four-cylinder. Um, I think it's called the M111 engine that was shared with the C class at the time. Generated something about 150 horsepower, which is a bit more than the 230 that preceded it. But that colour combination is very nice. It, it, it needs a bit of tidying up, but it's still very nice. So another old friend here, 1987 Mercedes-Benz 420 SEC, the W126 shape. Of course, you could get this as the, uh, what we would call today the S-Class as well, but this is the uh, SEC version. I do believe we have yet another beige leather interior view. Is this the door going to open? Yes, and this one, if anything, is even nicer than that E-Class. Viewers. Yes, of course, you've got wood and we've got electric seats and all sorts of things. Let's see on this is only between nine and eleven thousand pounds. It's it's interesting. I don't see any rust or anything on this. I don't know why it's not sold previously. I mean who who knows? But that is uh, most agreeable. So uh, 2005 Audi A4 1.8 20 valve turbo quattro cabriolet. The estimate of this is only between one and a half and two and a half thousand pounds, so it's not the most expensive thing around here. We are showing, you know, a little bit of signs of corrosion of things on here, but it's not up for very much money, is it? I bet this is probably quite nippy. I wonder if this is for, for yeah, it'd probably be the, uh, the 180 horsepower, won't it? If I if I check, most of them were. Let's have a look in the catalogue a second. Yeah, it doesn't actually, it doesn't actually say uh, what will break off, but I imagine it's for 180. The owner does actually say that it has the um, rust on the wings already. Yeah, I imagine it's normal for these. I guess it's a certain age. 
Yeah, the colour's very nice. It looks a lot darker on video than it is in real life. So if you thought that those two Mercedes we just saw there are a bit expensive, then this W124 that was also here for sale last month might be more up the street. I'd say this is probably a bit of a project. The estimate's only between um, 500 and 1500 pounds. Um, so it's gonna need a bit of work. Let's see if it's open, looks like it is. So it's a 91, it's a 260E. It smells quite nice in here. Got the cloth interior, that door card is missing. I don't know if that's actually in the boot or something. I mean, there's not too much corrosion on it. I should ask you if there's less corrosion on the front wings of this one than there were on the, on the cabrio back there. Just, you know, need to probably need tyres, wiring, all that sort of stuff. If I just somebody would want to, you know, clean it up a bit. And again, what we have a nice lot of variety around here, don't we? This is something that I really was not expecting to see here at all. It's a 2010 Kia Sportage 2 litre XE. It's the sort of thing you find on sensible second-hand reviews, isn't it, really? Fortunately, it's a petrol model, so we can talk about it. We don't talk about diesels on this channel, thanks to the Mayor of London and his friends around the country. Is this open? Well, it is. Actually, it's only done 71,000 miles, and it looks really clean, this. Now, these sort of cars are quite in demand now, and this is probably a bit more of the kind of traditional type of these, and, you know, it wouldn't drive exactly like a car, but that's, honestly, it's pretty good. And uh, for the estimate between two and a half and three and a half thousand pounds, I think that's too bad for one of these, actually. If you want a car like this, you want to go in the actual emission zone, and that's fine as well. I don't know why some of these cars hang around here at the auction house as long as they do, but this 1986 Escort XR3i Cabriolet has already been popular with a lot of you on the channel, and for some reason it's back here for sale again. I don't know why someone's not bought it. Estimate this time is between six and a half and eight thousand pounds, presumably because we're coming up to uh, you know, spring and then summer, or I should say, you know, the middle of spring. That's why somebody wants to try to sell it again. It does look very nice. It's just had a restoration. This, and we can look down here and see we've got Bad Company, Pat Benatar, and the best of Lindisfarne. Sort of thing, actually, I would like to drive myself on the channel, though. Let's close that properly. There we go. Yes, it looks great. I mean, these used to rust for fun, these Mark III and IV Escorts, didn't they? I've only ever driven a Mark III. It was a 1.3L, which uh, wasn't anything like this at all. So, you know, something like this, which is very, very kind of cat's eyes, isn't it? Um, although we didn't have a Mark three cabrio from what I remember, only a, sorry, a Mark IV, they only had a Mark III and then in Dempsey and Matepiece they had two Mark III cabrios in that, so it's very much around that kind of um, that era of the Yaris wheels as well. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching, I'm sure they're going to be getting more cars to um, the, uh, the sale in the next 10 days or so, um, the uh, so that itself takes place, I think, um, 24th of March. So thank you so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like us know your comment below. And uh, we shall see you again soon for more, not particularly accurate information. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below.